Well, today I'm going to tell you the tale of the Flopsy Bunnies by Beatrix Potter. And I've got two copies here, the two older copies. I have to use older copies to make sure that I'm, <laughs> I'm not reading you new versions because Beatrix Potter is now out of copyright. But Penguin sort of did new versions of the artwork a little while back so that they kind of updated <laughs> their copyright. So you have to make sure you're using her original drawings. Now you will notice there's a difference here. Um, there's been a black line has been added here and that's been done uh, to make it easier to do translations um, into foreign editions. And what other differences we've got? You see, there's a difference in the colour here. This is a bit brighter. This is printed on a kind of a clay finished, shiny surface paper. This is printed on just kind of more normal paper. And last week I went up to the British Museum and I was actually holding the original artwork in my hands. And somehow this kind of feels more real. Um, and I like that more than this. Is, this has been kind of intensified, but I think because of the uh, the different paper. This has been made by a different printer, Taylor's in Maidenhead, and this has been made by Clowes and Sons in Colchester. So the Beatrice Potter books have got a long history and are many, many editions, and very often they all say something like 1909 there, and everybody thinks, oh, it must be a first edition, but quite often they aren't. <laughs> so anyway, I prefer this version. So here we go. Uh, the Tale of the Flopsy Bunnies by Beatrix Potter. And perhaps, if you're not um, very strong on English, I should tell you about this one word here, soporific. Uh, soporific means something that will send you to sleep. Um, so it's like a sleeping draught or something like that. Beatrix Potter was not afraid to use long words and complicated ideas in her children's book. So here we go, The Tale of the Flopsy Bunnies by Beatrix Potter. It is said that the effect of eating too much lettuce is soporific. Well, I have never felt sleepy after eating lettuces, but then I am not a rabbit. They certainly had a very soporific effect upon the Flopsy Bunnies. When Benjamin Bunny grew up, he married his cousin Flopsy. They had a large family and they were very improvident and cheerful. I do not remember the separate names of their children. They were generally called the Flopsy Bunnies. As there was not always quite enough to eat, Benjamin used to borrow cabbages from Flopsy's brother, Peter Rabbit, who kept a nursery garden. Sometimes Peter Rabbit had no cabbages to spare. And when this happened, the Flopsy Bunnies went across the field to a rubbish heap in the ditch outside Mr. McGregor's garden. Mr. McGregor's rubbish heap was a mixture. There were jam pots and paper bags and mountains of chopped grass from the mowing machine, which always tasted oily and some rotten vegetable marrows, and an old boot or two. One day, oh joy, there were a quantity of overgrown lettuces which had shot into flour. The Flopsy Bunnies simply stuffed lettuces. By degrees, one after another, they were overcome with slumber and <sighs> lay down in the mown grass. Benjamin was not so much overcome as his children, and before going to sleep, he was sufficiently wide awake to put a paper bag over his head to keep off the flies. Well, the little Flopsy Bunny slept delightfully in the warm sun, and from the lawn beyond the garden came the distant clackety sound of the mowing machine, the blue bottles buzzed about the wall, and a little old mouse picked over the rubbish among the jam pots. I can tell you her name. She was called Thomasina Tittlemouse, a wood mouse with a long tail. She rustled across the paper bag and awakened Benjamin Bunny. The mouse apologised profusely and said, said she knew Peter Rabbit. 
while she and Benjamin were talking close under the wall, they heard a heavy tread above their heads, and suddenly Mr. McGregor emptied out a sack full of lawn mowings right upon the top of the sleeping Flopsy Bunnies. Benjamin shrank down under his paper bag, and the mouse hid in a jam pot. The little rabbits smiled sweetly in their sleep under the shower of grass. They did not awake because the lettuces had been so soporific. They dreamt that their mother, Flopsy, was tucking them up in a hay bed. Mr. McGregor looked down after emptying his sack. He saw some funny little brown tips of ears sticking up through the lawn mowings. He stared at them for some time. Presently, a fly settled on one of them and it moved. Mr. Gregor climbed down onto the rubbish heap. One, two, three, four, five, six little rabbits, said he as he dropped them into his sack. The Flopsy Bunnies dreamt that their mother was turning them over in bed. They stirred a little in their sleep, but still they did not wake up. Mr. McGregor tied up the sack and he left it on the wall. He went to put away the mowing machine. While he was gone, Mrs. Flopsy Bunny, who had remained at home, came across the field. She looked suspiciously at the sack and wondered where everybody was. Oop. Then the mouse came out of her jam pot and Benjamin took the paper bag off his head and they told the doleful tale. Benjamin and Flopsy were in despair. Bear. They could not undo the string, but Mrs. Tittlemouse was a resourceful person. She nibbled a hole in the bottom corner of the sack. The little rabbits were pulled out and pinched to wake them. Their parents stuffed the empty sack with three rotten vegetable marrows, an old blacking brush and two decayed turnips. Then they all hid under a bush and watched for Mr. McGregor. Mr. McGregor came back and picked up the sack and carried it off. He carried it hanging down as if it were rather heavy. The Flopsy Bunnies followed at a safe distance. They watched him go into his house and then they crept up to the window to listen. Mr. McGregor threw down the sack on the stone floor in a way that would have been extremely painful to the Flopsy Bunnies if they had happened to have been inside it. They could hear him drag his chair on the flags and chuckle. One, two, three, four, five, six little rabbits, said Mr. McGregor. Eh, what's that? What have they been spoiling now? inquired Mrs. McGregor. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six little fat rabbits, repeated Mr. McGregor, counting on his fingers. One, two, three. Oh, don't you be silly. What do you mean, you silly old man? And the sack. One, two, three, four, five, six, replied Mr. McGregor. The youngest, Flopsy Bunny, got up on the window sill. Mrs. McGregor took hold of the sack and felt it. She said she could feel six, but they must be old rabbits because they were so hard and all different shapes. They're not fit to eat, but the skins will do fine to line my old cloak. Line your old cloak, shouted Mr. McGregor. I shall sell them and buy myself backy. Rabbit tobacco? I shall skin them and cut off their heads. 
Mrs. McGregor untied the sack and put her hand inside, and when she felt the vegetables, she became very, very angry. She said that Mr. McGregor had done it a purpose. And Mr. McGregor was very angry too. One of the rotten marrows came flying through the kitchen window and hit the youngest Flopsy Bunny, and he was rather hurt. Then Benjamin and Flopsy thought that it was time to go home. So Mr. McGregor did not get his tobacco, and Mrs. McGregor did not get her rabbit skins. But next Christmas, Thomasine the Tittlemouse got a present of enough rabbit wool to make herself a cloak and a hood and a handsome muff and a pair of warm mittens. If you follow the links below, you can go to the British Museum website where you can see original sketches and sort of planned drawings and things like that for this book that I was actually looking at myself last week. It was an amazing experience. So uh, thanks for listening. Uh, big thumbs up and all that kind of stuff. Make sure you're subscribed for more. I'll be doing more Beatrix Potter as we go along. In the meantime, keep reading, reading, reading. <laughs> and I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye-bye.